got something that might interest you. <laughs> what are you selling? Selling items is the most straightforward way to make money in most games. Abusing the giant market present in an MMO can lead to massive returns, especially in the first few days of release. The most important tool to abuse this market is access to it. The auction house in WoW, the grand exchange in RuneScape, and the trading post in New World. All of these buildings let players engage in trades with the entire population of a server, rather than just whoever is nearby. It's important to understand how the trading post works if you want to make yourself some cash on release. Stick around, learn the basics, and I'll even throw in a few strats I plan on using that should hopefully result in some fat stacks. I just want to throw a disclaimer up first. All this information is taken from the beta, obviously, and could change. Probably not much, but just keep that in mind. When you open the trading post, this is what you'll see. The first tab shows every item in the auction house with the default sort, putting the cheapest items first. The small tabs on the left allow basic sorting for weapons, tools, armor, resources, consumables, ammo, and furniture. The sorting can be broken down into increasingly detailed categories to make finding whatever you're looking for easier. In this case, a hatchet. From here, we could see if there was a particular skin we want, or since we probably just care about stats and cost, we can sort all hatchets by price, tier, or gear score. We can also use the filters on the top if we want a specific gem or perk. Alternatively, if you know exactly what you want, you can type it in the search bar. The drop down shows items matching what you typed, so iron would show iron ore, iron arrows, and anything else with iron in the name. Whenever you find something you want, click on it, and you can enter how much you want. The final cost after fees will appear, and clicking buy now will send the items to the storage shed of the settlement you're in. Another option for buying is to place a buy order. This is a standing offer that anyone can contribute to over time. For example, here I put up a buy order for 10 iron at 4 gold each, lasting one day. As long as this buy order is up, if someone goes to the trading post to sell their iron, they will see that there is someone willing to buy it immediately. The upside is the possibility of scoring some cheap items, but the downside is that placing a buy order ties up all the gold needed to complete the order until it's fulfilled or cancelled. This could easily backfire if someone undercuts you, so be careful about listing buy orders with too high of a quantity or too long a duration. Whenever part of your order is filled, the items will be deposited in your storage, even if it's full. Now, say you want to buy something, in our case ginger, and you get no results. Sure, you can place a buy order and wait, but we have another option. In the top right, there's a drop-down menu next to the words Showing Orders At. Here, you can change what trading post you are viewing, but you can still only buy from the settlement you're in. All settlements will show you every trading post, and the location column will show us where the listing is. In this case, Windsward and Everfall have some, but the listing at Everfall is ten times the most expensive listing in Windsward. So, if we really want that ginger, we can teleport to Windsward, go to the trading post, and finally buy our ginger. While this feature is very useful for finding items on other trading posts, the real takeaway here is that every trading post is separate, meaning each settlement has its own little economy. I actually only noticed this in the last week of the beta. I just assumed it worked like other MMOs I've played, where the auction house in one city is the same as any other, and an item posted in one could freely be bought from the other. As an example of how to abuse this, on my server, iron cartridges and Windsward were around 0.1 gold each. However, they were listed for between 0.5 and 0.7 gold at first light. So, I bought around 2,000 cartridges from Windsward, home teleported back to First Light, and listed them in batches of 300 at 0.01 less than the cheapest other option available. I restocked them whenever they sold out, and ended with roughly five times my starting investment in just two days. On the other hand, big settlements also have more people checking the auction house, which means a quicker turnaround, especially on big ticket items. I listed my first batch of steel tools at First Light, but they were taking a really long time to sell. When I made my second batch, I listed them all at Windsward to avoid flooding the First Light market. They all sold within an hour. Since we've already gotten a little off topic anyways, time to move on to the second tab, Sell. This one's pretty self-explanatory. When you click it, it has the same sorting layout as the Buy tab, but it only shows items you can sell, which means they have to be full durability and not bound to you. You can sell from your shed, they don't need to be in your inventory. Selling an item is also pretty simple. Find the item you want to sell, click on it, then open a sell order. The page is similar to the Buy order screen. You can see if anyone has a buy order for your item, what other sell orders exist, and how much they're priced at. This information lets you decide if you want to cash out quickly with a buy order from someone else, or undercut your competition and wait for a larger profit. Once you place the order, you pay the listing fee, and the item is removed from your bags. Once it sells, the money is placed directly into your bags. Finally, we have the My Orders tab. Here, you can see what outstanding orders you have, both buying and selling, and cancel them if you want. You can also see your completed and expired orders, useful information to see what actually sold and what just wasted your listing fees. Personally, I hope they improve this tab a little. I think they should just break it into two separate tabs for clarity's sake. Alright, that's everything about the trading post. Smash that like, destroy that sub, all that good stuff. I'll see you all eventually. Wait, I promised gold making tips. Shit. 
All right, time to let the cat out of the bag. My first tip isn't really a secret if you've watched my other videos. Plug, plug, plug. The goal is to abuse the northern outpost to craft tier three goods, like gathering tools and bags, before anyone even upgrades the settlement. You could probably sell these for a few thousand gold within the first few days. Listings like that on the trading post can be expensive with all the fees though, so it might be a good idea to sell them the old fashioned way. Spamming chat. Just be ready to slap down a lot of troll offers, and I'm sure you'll sell them eventually. Personally, my first steel mining pick sold for 3,000 gold over chat in my server. My other big tip is ammo. You probably noticed that New World doesn't have any sort of ammo vendor, other than the faction vendor, but that's not a viable option for mass amounts of ammo. Early game, flint arrows are good enough, but the lowest tier bullet is an iron cartridge. For the first few days of the beta, these babies are going for 5 or more gold each on my server. I sold around 500 of them just from looting. By the time I actually got around to actively crafting and selling them, the price had dropped all the way to one gold. Still, it was pretty amazing profits given the requirements. 50 bullets only require 4 iron ignits, 1 linen, and 1 gunpowder, which translates to 16 iron ore, 4 fiber, 5 charcoal, 2 flint, and 1 saltpeter. Note that this will leave you with 4 extra gunpowder as the recipe makes 5 at a time. Most of these materials are pretty easy to find. Iron's a big dark rock, hemp is weed with purple flowers on top, saltpeter's a rock with white deposits on it only found in caves. I normally hit up wolf dens for a nice supply, which makes it a great early investment to get some spending cash. Also, keep an eye on the price of iron arrows. If too many people start selling bullets, the price might crash and arrows would be a decent recovery. All right, that's everything about money. Thumbs up for stonks, thumbs down for being poor. Make sure you leave a comment saying how much you hate people who manipulate markets and MMOs, and I'll see you all eventually.